I do things by my own terms whenever I want because I want to. Yo, for those of you who follow along, this one feels really good. David Flynn, Tommy Tillman's target was at the bottom of the red tape and not the top. That was explained in the video introduction, which you apparently did not review. You also keep repeating that the ball is not over the target. The standard is the rep is credited when the center of the ball hits the target or at or above the specified height. This indicates that you are not aware of the standard. Your reviews are therefore flawed and reckless. I respectively request that you issue an apology. Alina Brager, when you say the middle of the ball needs to be over the top of the target, it's clear that you have missed the introduction of Tommy's video where the standards are discussed and the target is clarified. Tommy's target was at the bottom of the red line, not the top, and the standards we blah 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 shit. Sabrina Salamalamani. This post is irresponsible and quite frankly shameful. Did you even read the rules? Does it even matter? It doesn't matter! As someone who watched two Masters athletes compete in semifinals, I did. I also watched how these athletes and coaches that judged them painstakingly made sure to follow the rules to a T. Blah 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 blah, but hey, as long as you get your views, what do you care? So those were a couple of comments in the initial video titled that we have a huge issue in the Masters semifinals competition. I put that video out in foresight, so before it was even done, because I was given shit about not giving people time to fix their videos. So I was like, hey guys, here's a handful of shit that I found wrong with the Masters wall ball workout. It was a death by, if you recall, and remember that if you hadn't had hit the number of reps due to a number of no reps, what allows you to then get into the ensuing rounds? So that's what I did. And there was one athlete in particular that I showed in that video, that name was Tommy Tillman. And as you heard, a lot of the issues with that video were that what seems to be his friends and family and relatives were all upset that I didn't take into account that he measured the tape differently than the way that you're supposed to measure it. They're getting mad at me for not reading the rules, but really, they don't read the fucking rules because the rules state that you should have the tape measured to the top so that the middle of the ball needs to clear the top of the tape line, not the other way around, you freaking idiots. Idiot! But don't worry, those who know, know. We have another comment. Mr. Rich Froning Sr. absolutely loved this because he gets it. It's almost as if his son has won like 30 consecutive CrossFit Games titles for good reason because he freaking gets it. These guys don't get it. And actually, that's a huge part of my process. I've brought this up a handful of times in the recent and past days where I try to keep myself as emotionally uninvolved as possible so that I can give a great perspective to those who care to fucking listen to it. So let's just say that I was related to Tommy Tillman. I was watching him. Maybe I don't want to be the one to make that video. Tommy Tillman's relatives didn't fucking get it. I made another video where I'm like, okay, I'll listen. Let's assume that you guys are right. I doubled down on it and it still showed that Tommy Tillman should not have been able to continue through the workout the way that he was doing it. And now we fast forward a little bit and he failed a drug test at the 2022 CrossFit Games in the 65 plus division. So if CrossFit had just listened to me, or maybe if Tommy Tillman had withdrawn himself from the competition, he would still be able to compete next year. Andrew Hiller was doing Tommy and all of his relatives a big old favor because they could still live in fucking La La Land and think that their athlete isn't cheating and blah, blah, blah. Now I'm going to go ahead and bet that there's also some sort of a story around that very similar to the contaminated supplement story. It's a justification of things. This is what happens is, oh, well, he took clomiphene. It was in something. By the way, that's the substance that he tested positive for. We're going to talk a little bit more on that in a second. Clomiphene. Fuck it, we'll talk about it right now. First of all, I got all of this off of the barbellspin.com. I don't know where he gets this information, and I'm going to look like a freaking idiot if none of this is true because it's not on the CrossFit Games website. But the Barbell Spin reports on September 26th of 2022 that Tommy Tillman, 65, is the first athlete of the 2022 CrossFit Games to receive a sanction for a failed drug test positive for clomiphene. He gets a four-year ban through 2026, which means that he's essentially done forever. He reports in here that clomiphene is an estrogen receptor modulator that can help boost testosterone levels that Pedro Martins, William Dolapolgado, Michael... Chorus fucking shit. They all tested positive for clomiphene. Now, clomiphene is a CIRM, it's a selective estrogen receptor modulator. Now, that's not something that many of us are going to be familiar with. That's what I'm here for. There are SARMs, there are CIRMs. CIRMs have been around much longer than SARMs have been, to my knowledge at least. I won't say that with a stamp of 100% certainty on it, but SARMs are the ones where we've heard of like the RAD 140s, we've heard of the Osterines, we've heard of LGD. These are the ones that we remember Ricky Garrard tested positive for in 2017, and everyone's like, he's on steroids. And I was like, no, he's on SARMs, they're different. And the reason they're different is because these substances attach to the receptor, and in this case, it's an 
estrogen receptor modulator. SERM, selective estrogen receptor modulator. SARMs attached to the androgen receptor. The ones that make you big, strong, and awesome, like Ricky Garrard was in 2017, like he admitted to, and like he served his ban and now he's good to go. And in the case of a SERM, as reported by the barbell spin, it says that it can help with ovulation in women and in men, it can help with testosterone levels, which is not incorrect information. If you are a male with shitty testosterone levels, some doctors will give you a serum such as Clomid, Clomiphene. That is in the hopes of helping you increase your LH and your FSH, luteinizing hormone, follicle stimulating hormone, make your balls kick into gear, tell your brain to start shooting out more testosterone. That is the method that most people through a doctor will use Clomid. However, in the world of performance enhancement, people will use Clomid as a post-cycle therapy. So let's just say I did a huge ass cycle of steroids, three months of testosterone, Dianabol, and fucking Anivar, and let's just say I threw in some trend. Let's say I did that for three months and I started it six months ago. So let's just say it's six months and I did three months of it and I stopped. Well, let's say I was taking a testosterone ester that was an enthate, so it's gonna stay in there for a little bit. Two to three weeks later, I'm going to start taking clomiphene. And the reason I'm going to do that is because my entire body is gonna not know what to do. Very similar to how I said the doctor would give you clomiphene to help you kick in your LH and your FSH. A steroid user who is removing themselves from a very hefty steroid cycle will also introduce clomid for the same purposes. So they had their body in this feedback loop, which is, oh, I've got all this stuff, I don't have to do anything. But then when you stop taking all of that stuff, you've gotta remind your body what it's supposed to be doing. Introduce clomid. Clomid, and then your body's like, oh, I gotta start making testosterone. Otherwise, you start feeling like shit. The other thing that Clomid is going to do as an estrogen receptor modulator is it's going to attach to the estrogen receptor. So people will use it to help try to keep themselves from getting their really bad side effects like water retention and gyno, you know, the big old boobs that some guys will get. Very similar to another one called Novadex, which is also a serum. People use that to combat gynocasmastia. The issue with taking these things is in my imaginary scenario, let's say Tommy Tillman did the world's biggest steroid cycle and he started six months ago and then three months later he was done and then he started taking the Clomid because he wanted to get his testosterone levels back up naturally. You're going to take that for about a month, maybe four to six weeks. You're taking your Clomid at a certain dosage every single day. That thing is going to stay in you. So let's say you did that. Now we're six months to three months and you started taking it two weeks later. You take it for upwards of six weeks. We're five months in and we have a month until the CrossFit Games. Well, if you've watched my channel, you've learned a little bit about Half-Lives. And the half-life of Clomid is about five days, which means that every five days, you're going to lose half of that amount. So let's say you took a 10 milligram pill of Clomid. That means that in five days, there's still going to be five milligrams left in you. And that means that in another five days, 10 days after you stop taking it, you're still going to have 2.5 milligrams of Clomid left in your system. And by all means, that means that after about eight of those cycles, it'll be out of your system. There will still be trace elements of it. But let's see, quick math tells me five times eight is 40 days after the last time you took a Clomid pill, it'll still be in there. So in this hypothetical scenario, that is what happened. Another hypothetical scenario, Tommy Tillman is getting it from a doctor or he is getting it with the exact reasons I mentioned before, which is just a boost up testosterone levels, which in my opinion, isn't the best way to do it, but I'm not a doctor, so don't listen to me. But then there is a third scenario where he is currently on testosterone replacement therapy. That is not at all outside of the realm possibility because he is a 65 year old man who puts his body through the ringer to try to compete at the level of the CrossFit games. And in that scenario, doctors also prescribe clomiphene in conjunction with the TRT to help circumvent the side effects that I already talked about, which is the water retention. And there's also a possibility where there's a doctor who doesn't know what they're doing, or maybe Tommy Tillman is trying to have a baby and you do Clomid and HCG, human chronographic gonadotropin, which are things that help kick in the ability of your balls to produce testosterone. That is an unlikely scenario though, because he's 65 years old. That's usually something you'll see in the 35, 50 year old range, where they're still trying to have kids. They don't want their balls to shrink. So you take the HCG, you take the Clomid so that you increase the likelihood of yourself being able to have kids and all that stuff. So I presented you right there with three scenarios. Number one was he went to a doctor and he wanted to increase his testosterone. They gave him Clomid. I don't think that that's what happened. 
Number two was he did a giant cycle of steroids about six months ago and he was on a post-cycle therapy, which included Clomid, and that's what he got caught for because he didn't get it out of his system in time. I don't think that that's what happened either. Option number three is that he is currently using testosterone replacement therapy with a doctor. He's also on Clomid from that doctor, and I think that this is probably the most likely scenario. And I think that actually there are many more individuals in the master's age groups using testosterone replacement therapy than anybody freaking knows because as I've stated in another one of my videos, it is something that you could be using during competition and CrossFit will not know the better. Currently be using testosterone as long as you're within a certain reference range and you can pass every single drug test because it is too expensive for CrossFit to test everybody unless you first test positive on the first test. And that one is an easy one to beat. I'm not going to go into the nooks and crannies of that one. The main reason I wanted to bring up this instance is because it's the first of many where I'm assuming there will be more people who are testing positive and coming out throughout the CrossFit off season. It appears as if as Barbell Spin reported that he did not try to appeal it, which is why he is the first to come out. So everything else is going through the appeals process and it'll come out a little bit from now. But the other reason is to bring up the fact that I do things by my own terms whenever I want because I want to. And I try not to listen to anybody because if I listen to somebody, then I get a little mental attachment. And Andrew, the crazy son of a bitch in his garage, doesn't want any mental attachment to anything because then it's going to harm my process. And I like my process. And I hope you guys too. What do you think about the Tommy Tillman situation? Which of the three options do you believe it was? Did I miss an option of those four? Go ahead and comment. Andrew Hiller out.